On our adventure into the open deserts and rocky hillsides of West Texas, I'm out to find two very famous invertebrates, one of which is perfectly harmless, and the other one is definitely not. And today, we're going to be showing you how to tell the difference. Also, before we get started, make sure to go ahead and subscribe. We make videos every single week. And while you're at it, make sure to leave a like for more Versus videos. Thank you guys for being here. Now on to the adventure. First on our list to catch is the giant desert millipede. This is a perfectly harmless species, and is probably one of the most common invertebrates here in West Texas. It shouldn't take us too long to find one. After that, I think you guys know which bug is next, but let's focus on the millipede first. They can be found virtually anywhere in this environment, and any time of day. So we started walking, and immediately started running into some other desert bugs along the way. Check this out, this is one of my favorite grasshoppers here, I haven't gotten to see one of these yet. I call these a painted lubber, but they're not a lubber. They are gorgeous. They're very quick though. Oh. Got him. Oh. Don't, don't got him. Don't got him. Got him. There we go. Check this out. Look at that. He's got them Louisiana LSU colors. That is awesome. He's purple and yellow and orange and white. They get bigger than this. This is just the time of year that we're here. They're all going to be small like this. But this is one of my favorite grasshoppers out here. Look at that. Absolutely gorgeous. I don't know too much about the species in particular. I just know that they are gorgeous. They're fairly common out here if you get them in the right areas. Absolutely stunning. Another amazing bug out here in West Texas. We're gonna go and put him back and keep looking for more. All right, see you little buddy. Get out of here. We're looking for your bigger friends. The millipede. Check this out. Yo, he's pretty. Bright yellow one too. There's actually two. Oh, it's getting into a hole. Need that. Oh, that's a big one. Check that out. <gasps> that is a big desert millipede. They're pretty friendly. They don't actually uh, have any kind of bite or anything, but they will do a lot of things to get you to put them down. They smell really bad, but uh, that is a desert millipede. Now there's two actually very distinct different colorations of millipede here in West Texas. This is actually the prettier of the two. This is the yellow phase. And there is also a brown phase, which looks a lot more like your typical American giant millipede. Now you can see why they call them millipede. Milli means a thousand, pede, legs, and look at all those legs. They don't technically have exactly a thousand legs, but it's just a good, good show of how many legs. They can actually have less or more depending on the size. And they're gonna have a couple of little legs per body section. Now, unlike the centipede, these guys are not a venomous animal. Now they are poisonous, which means most things aren't going to be eating these millipedes, but uh, they are perfectly safe to pick up. And I knew exactly what it was the second I looked at. They've got a more round build. They're not fast. Centipedes are fast. Millipedes, pretty slow. It's pretty good. He's about, probably about seven or eight inches long. They do get bigger than this. In fact, they can get probably about that big around, which would be an absolute unit of a millipede. But this is a pretty average size adult. What I think we're gonna do is, we're gonna hold on to this millipede just in case we end up finding a centipede because I've always thought it'd be cool to show both of them next to each other. And uh, you know, there's always that slight chance we find a centipede today. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this guy up and uh, we're gonna keep looking for more. Up next is the giant desert centipede. This species isn't always an easy find, typically hiding under rocks or ledges during the day and coming out into the open only at night to hunt. They're also incredibly fast. So catching them is no easy task. Now a lot of people might wonder how things even survive in these deserts. A lot of things here are nocturnal. But you can have anything up in here. In fact, there's even, I'm even looking across and there's some caves all along here. But this is what our smaller animals are gonna be living in. Stuff like this. And at night, they'll come on out and become findable. But this is what most of our target species would be in. Rattlesnakes, centipedes, Tarantulas are going to be more down in the sand, so I wouldn't expect to see a tarantula up here, but loads and loads of species call these rock cliffs home. So after hiking around a bit more, I decided to head off to a small cave along the cliff face and see if anything was hanging around. We immediately found a small dark phase desert millipede hanging out at the mouth of the cave. And with a bit of further searching, this cave ended up having exactly what we hoped to find today. I have to guess there could be more in here as well. It's not a big cave though. They just got, goodness, mosquitoes. There's mosquitoes everywhere. There's not many rocks in here. Oh my goodness, centipede. 
Check that out! Giant desert! Oh my goodness! <gasps> what? Look at that. Now this is actually not the head. This is something interesting I can show, because when I mess with this centipede, he's going to not stop moving, so I want to take the time I can to just kind of point stuff out. Look at the back of his body. That's meant to mimic his head. The second I mess with the centipede, he's going to go ballistic, so i got to get him on the stick fast. Don't go into a crack. Don't go into a crack. Jeez, oh, God. This is why I like him with sticks. <laughs> he is rowdy. Goodness! Look at him. He is rowdy. Petting. No. <laughs> How about I don't and say I did? Very similar to the Texas redhead, but crazier. Much crazier. Ooh. That is awesome. That is a giant desert centipede. Now, this is not even full grown. They'll get three times this size. Can you imagine that? A centipede that big around. Now, centi obviously means 100, but uh, they don't typically have 100 legs. They typically have less. They have a pair of legs per body section, and they can vary in how many body sections they have. Notice what he's doing. He's getting up, and he's trying to reach for something new. That's why I like handling these guys with sticks, because, uh, one, holding them is a bad idea. They will typically bite. Uh, you know, obviously, if you grab them, they'll turn around and whack you immediately. Very infamous bite. You know, a lot of people know that this centipede has a pretty painful bite. And what they do is they grab forward. They get these little pedipalps in the front of their mouth, and they grab the skin and bite. And I've seen it happen. Uh, I've seen it happen, and it is freaky. Oh, he's chilling out. Check that out. He's chilling out. This is my first ever giant desert centipede. Now, I knew these guys were up here. This is probably the coolest way we could find them. Let's just be honest. This is awesome. Like, come on. Rocks. The only thing that'd be better if there weren't mosquitoes in here. I mean, there are just mosquitoes everywhere in here. I left Louisiana to escape those. Now, he's not going to have those bright yellow legs like the Texas Redheads back home, but uh, you can see he's got a fully orange body, orangish legs, and then that black back. And sometimes they'll have a solid black head. Typically, that's more reminiscent of the ones out west of here, and some of them east of here will also get that. But in this part of Texas, they're typically going to be red with that little black back. And uh, sometimes they won't even have that. Sometimes they will just be a giant, solid red centipede. Wow, what a spectacular animal. Now they're not, I wouldn't call these guys common up here to see. Uh, they do take a bit of searching to find, but there are a lot of them out here. Like there is so much habitat, there is a lot of these guys out here. They're just not easy to find. They are not the easiest thing to find. And there's a couple different little subspecies out here. Lots of variations of these centipedes. And this is honestly one of the prettier ones. That is awesome. Well, I think what we're going to go and do now, this actually lined up really well. Uh, we've got the millipede over in my backpack over there. We're going to take him out and actually compare the giant desert centipede to the giant desert millipede. Wow. Well, that is absolutely perfect. Two bright red little inverts, oftentimes confused for one another. Not really in person. Like most people would look at this and say it's a centipede. Most people would look at this and say a millipede. A lot of people do ask, what is the difference? And you can see when they're right next to each other, they look completely different. But let's point out some very specifics. For one, centipedes are flatter. If you look at this millipede, he's very round. He's kind of just a little oval-shaped guy. Whereas centipedes are flat. That's kind of based on their natural habits. These guys like to wedge up in between rocks. Whereas these guys are going to be spending more time in grasslands, open areas, and occasionally just kind of going under stuff. Honestly, everything about the millipede just screams friendly. Their whole body is round, they've got very tiny legs, and everything about the centipede just screams danger. Now, another very notable difference between these two species is their diet. Millipedes are omnivores. They will eat de dead and decaying material, but for the most part, they're going to be eating little plants and little stuff like that. They're not going to be hunting out anything, even though they probably could eat tiny little bugs. Uh, that's not really their main target. They're mostly eating vegetation. Centipedes are some of the greatest invertebrate predators we have. In fact, a centipede of this size would probably be able to take down a small mouse. You heard that right. And they will oftentimes eat snakes and other centipedes. Now, the defense mechanisms of both these species are very interesting because we've got a poisonous animal here, something that you cannot eat, something that you cannot ingest, and many other species can't as well. And then you've got something venomous, which probably, you honestly probably could eat a centipede. But uh, I wouldn't try it because they're probably going to try to bite you before you bite them. That's the main difference between these two species is how they defend themselves. I'll hold a millipede all day long, but a centipede, I'd much rather him chill on the stick. 
Both very good climbers. Is that little brown one still around here? Oh, look, there he is. Hey, bud, you want to join the verses? You want to join the verses, bud? We're going to have all three. We're going to have two different millipedes and a centipede. Look at that. You're going to see that there are a lot of variations within these bugs. Mostly color and the general look of centipedes and the general look of millipedes is going to be exactly like what you're looking at here. Even down in South America, even in other parts of the world, over in Asia, centipedes are going to look like centipedes and millipedes are going to look like millipedes. Well guys, that's it for today's video. We really hope you enjoyed. And if you did, consider subscribing and liking this video and make sure to check out the video we did with the Texas red-headed centipede a few weeks back. Really awesome species. We're going to go ahead and let all these little guys go. And we'll see you guys next time. Man, this is awesome. Alright, see the guy back under your rock. Woo -hoo. That is awesome. Here we go. Here we go. Nice little shoes, man. There you go. Get out of here.